What's up everybody, it's Travis here from Travis.media. Today we're gonna be looking at some awesome new-ish features that are now shipped with Docker Desktop. So it's been a while since I've used Docker for anything. There was a day a few years back where it was a daily duty for me to be containerizing and deploying applications, but not so much since then. So when I opened up Docker recently to do some work and I upgraded Docker Desktop to the latest version, I noticed a lot of new features. And before you go and say, hey Travis, these have been out for a while now, again, they're new to me and they may be new to you. So in this video, I'm going to walk through some of Docker's new features, namely Docker Build Cloud, Docker Init, and Docker Scout, with a brief mention on the whole Build X, Build Kit combo. And I do want to mention that this video is sponsored by Docker. Thank you, Docker, so much for supporting this channel. And if you're brand new to Docker and you need an overview, then check out my Learn to Code Docker in One Hour video to learn the theory and get hands on by containerizing two applications. Sure, the video is a couple of years old, but the fundamentals really haven't changed regarding how it works and the layering and all the commands and all of that. And the video has been received well since then. I'll put a link below to it. Otherwise, we're going to look at these features now and most importantly, get hands on to see them in action. With that being said, let's look at Docker Build Cloud first. So what is Docker Build Cloud? Well, it's a service that lets you build your container images faster, both locally and in your CI pipeline. The builds actually run on cloud infrastructure, no configuration required, and it uses a remote build cache, ensuring fast builds anywhere and for all of your team members. The problem Docker Build Cloud is trying to solve is primarily long build wait times. A study by Incredibuild, which is a company that this guy used to work at, the study showed that on average, developers lose one hour each day from waiting on these builds with impact on productivity and developer experience costing a small organization about $420,000 per year. Builds are taking an average of 20 minutes, with almost 25% of these respondents saying that it's actually greater than 30 minutes. And for CI builds, the average was 58 minutes waiting for builds to finish. Attempts to address this, based on the same study, with upgrading hardware and reducing code base size just isn't sustainable. So what Docker found was that moving these builds to the cloud, to a cloud, instead of being local or on-premises, resulted in build increases of 39x. That's huge. Moving this to the cloud gives us access to faster compute resources, multi-architecture builds, so both AMD and ARM builders, and a shared cache for you and your team. So developers can actually work on other tasks in parallel while waiting for the build to return. And Docker gives one example here of some customers who develop enterprise collaboration software. They were able to reduce their build time from an average duration of 15 to 20 minutes to less than two minutes using Docker Build Cloud. There are a few other benefits, which we'll get to in a minute, but let's go ahead and dive in and see how this works. First, you'll need a Docker account. It's free, just go sign up at hub.docker.com slash sign up. Second, download Docker Desktop. This is the easiest way to run Docker on your machine. And if you're watching this video, you've probably already done all of this. Next, you need to add the builder to your local environment. To do this, you need to go to build.docker.com and sign up for a Docker Build Cloud subscription. It's free, but you do need to provide a payment method to sign up. And if your company's on a paid Docker subscription, you're good to go. Next, choose Create a Cloud Builder and create one. And finally, open up Docker Desktop, go to Settings and Builders, and under Available Builders, you should see your new builder. Now choose Connect to Builder to connect. So how does all this work? Well, from Air point of view, it's the same business as usual. You just call the Docker build command. But the magic is what happens at that point. Normally, the build runs locally via Docker. But with Build Cloud, the build request gets sent to this remote destination in the cloud. And don't worry, all data is encrypted in transit, and builds are completely isolated, running on individual EC2 instances with dedicated storage. But this build request, this remote builder, executes the build steps and then sends the resulting build output to a destination that you specify, whether that's your local Docker engine or maybe a remote image repository. So you're offloading the build elsewhere and receiving the build output back or sending it somewhere else. So let's try it out. Now, before I do this, I'm gonna prune my system as well as the build cloud so that I have fresh environments with no cache. So here I have a WordPress site that I'm gonna containerize and I'm gonna call the Docker build command to build it. And that took 31.9 seconds to build, no cached steps. Next, I'll run Docker build using the Docker cloud builder instead by using this builder flag with my cloud builder name. You can also set it to use it by default if that's what you want to do. And that took 29 seconds, and again, no cached steps. 
Now what's the benefit here? That's practically the same time, maybe two seconds faster. Well, the magic here isn't in that first run, it's in the subsequent runs. You see, with your team using this shared cloud server for its builds, you will all benefit from the cache that exists there after that first build. So on second and subsequent builds, let's see how long it takes. And it takes less than a second, and the majority of the steps are being cached. Now the key here is that it's also cached for your entire team. One person runs it, everyone else benefits from the cache. And you can see the builds from everyone else on your team. Also, the cloud builder automatically builds for the architecture matching your local environment. Now, you might be like, hey, that first command locally that you ran used the docker build command, but on the other two, you use this docker build x build command. Does that affect the performance here? What's the difference between the two? Well, in newer versions of Docker Desktop and Docker Engine, you're using the build X by default, even when you invoke the legacy Docker build command. So it doesn't matter, it uses build X anyway. And just a side note, what is build X? Well, build X is a CLI tool, a drop-in replacement for the legacy Docker build, and contains more utilities like creating and managing builders. And when we say builder, we're talking about an instance of a build kit backend. So there's this build X CLI tool that manages these build kit backends. And that build kit backend can be on the same system as the build X client, like on my machine locally, or it can run remotely, like in Docker build cloud. The build kit is the process that executes the build workloads. Now the build kit in Docker build cloud doesn't have to send the output back to you in your local machine. It can send it directly to an image repository or another destination that you specify. So this build kit is more efficient than the legacy builder that it replaces because it only requests the resources that the build needs when they're needed. The legacy builder actually takes a copy of the local file system. But we're getting off topic here. That's a video for another day. Docker Build Cloud also works great in your CI pipeline. There's some examples here in the documentation for multiple platforms to help you get started. So that's Docker Build Cloud. Let's shift now and talk about Docker init. So when you have a working code base and you go to dockerize it, many of us try to go and look for some example out there in the same framework or in the same language to give us a starting point, some kind of example of a starter template that we can use, put in our Docker file and then work from there. Well, Docker actually gives you that starter template now with Docker init. So Docker init is a CLI that simplifies the process of adding Docker to a project. This command actually automates the creation of necessary Docker assets, such as Docker files, uh, compose files, Docker ignore files, based on the characteristics of your project. So I have here a .NET MVC app, and I decided today that I want to containerize it. Where do I start? Well, Docker can take care of providing a working starting point for us. We simply just run docker init and we'll get some prompts here. So it detected that I'm using ASP.NET Core. So I could select something else if not, but let me choose that. What do I want to call it? I'll leave it that. What version of .NET do you want to use? 8.0 is fine. And what port do you want to use to access your app? 8080. And look at this. I now have a Docker file, all right, a working Docker file with explanations and comments in it. I have a compose file so I can run docker compose commands. I have a docker ignore file based on my type of project. And I have a nice readme file that tells me to get started, run docker compose up dash dash build. It's that easy to get started with docker in your code base. So let's see what to do. We can run this command docker compose up dash dash build to build and run our program. And it runs. We can also offload the build to Docker build cloud. So the local build cloud was 41 seconds. If we run the build cloud in the cloud, it drops it to 20 seconds. And now that it's cached, the subsequent build takes less than two seconds. So Docker init, what a useful feature. No more searching around for some starter template, just run Docker init, choose your project, and Docker will do the work for you. Finally, let's talk about Docker Scout. Now the problem that Docker Scout solves is that when you build a container image, you have layers and you have software packages that are susceptible to vulnerabilities which can compromise the security of your containers and applications. Docker Scout actually analyzes your images against a regularly updated vulnerability database and lets you know about weaknesses in your container. If I go to Docker Scout in the navigation, I can see that I have two vulnerabilities in my WordPress image, one medium and one high. Then if I go to my image, I can actually see the affected packages and the versions I need to upgrade or downgrade to in order to fix the vulnerability. That's neat. It actually tells me my problem and how to fix it. And for all the terminal nerds out there, I can also check this with the Docker CLI. Now I can make the adjustment by switching to versions of the packages that it recommends, rebuild my image, and voila, 
I'm clean again. But hold on. The thing about Docker Scout is it isn't just about inspecting vulnerabilities based on specific packages. The bigger picture is that it supports policy evaluation within an organization. Policies are a set of customizable rules that let organizations track whether images are compliant with their supply chain requirements. So for that, there's a nifty dashboard for your organization at scout.docker.com where you can set policies and ultimately check whether your images are compliant for your supply chain requirements. All you do is head to your repository and enable Scout analysis on your images. After it has time to process the data, you'll have a full dashboard into the organizational compliance of your images. Each box here represents a policy showing your current compliance rating, and here below are the vulnerability trends for the environment over time. By default, Docker Scout gives you policies out the box like fixable critical and high vulnerabilities, high profile vulnerabilities, supply chain attestations, quality gates passed, default non-root user, unapproved base images, things like that. In some of these default policies, you can configure further, meaning you can clone it and from there create new custom policies based on your own configurations. And of course, from the navigation here, you can dig into the particulars of the policies themselves, images, vulnerabilities, and even integrations as you can integrate Docker Scout with your CI pipeline, cloud registries, do quality checks with SonarCube, etc. It really is a full package of tools here to help you maintain a compliant, secure outlook within your organization and ultimately help you build better images. So be sure you check out Docker Scout as well. So what about you? Are you using these features that we've talked about? What's your favorite new thing about Docker? Let me know down below in the comments. If you found this video helpful, give it a thumbs up. If you haven't already, consider subscribing to the channel and I'll see you in the next video.